give you a shot. All right, welcome back to. Uh, so we're on. Apparently, yeah. is the fastest. And game. someone wants a shot. Then All right, so welcome back to five eight five. Hey, it's fitting. He's, he plays in this division. Who? Dan Azari? Yeah. The one you wants to take a shot at you at? Yeah, of course. Uh, Simon, throwing his sources under the bus. Eagle, it's, not, it's Mo Khan. He it's said, "Take a shot at me," and then we started the show that way. And yeah, so people are rather right. confused. All right, da- Jam, let's dive into it. Uh, five A, the week that was, uh, we look at divisional playoffs last Saturday. Only two of the top tier seeds won their games, which was Smoke and the A's against Mavericks in a two point effort, in which was a fantastic finish. <laughs> Uh, as the snitches lost, and then Greendale Human Beings in a close one over the Warriors by six. Every other team that was a lower seed lost in that opening weekend of yeah. It's it's, in a, it's two of the teams we we thought. Mind you, we were, our picks were terrible, so I mean, <laughs> uh, two of the teams nothing. we thought would win means nothing because they we knew nothing about what would happen in this division. Um, although Greendale Human Beings, we thought this would be a bad matchup for Warriors, and it proved to be the case. Uh, but it wasn't that terrible. They lost by six. I know, but they still, I mean... They still lost, yes. They still, they still won the game that we expected. But I mean, they win. are playing against a team that's most likely making the finals and winning the division, yeah. so... Green Hill Human Beings? This is probably their closest game of all the playoff runs. Uh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, look, yeah, we'll see, but so far, yeah, it has been. Like, they got they got 10 guys on Cup coming up next, which we'll talk so about. So, Danny Elwood really had three incompletions all game. Just putting it on. Which game? Against, Havis, one, uh, against, uh, against the Warriors. Warriors? He had yeah. one yesterday. A single one. Yeah. So and it was four a completions in the playoffs, and it was a drop. Well, so maybe, a PD, but yeah, anyways. maybe you guys fix your hands. I, I think <laughs> even the defense. I'll tell you one one thing about ten guys, one cup. I, I saw the game uh, last night, Wednesday in Hebert, and then last Saturday against Half of Stars. Mm-hmm. They're peaking at the right time. Uh, I just feel like they're they're clicking on both it's sides. Right. Their defense has been really good. They've come up with big plays in the red zone. Uh, I'm worried about turnovers and, and big ints at the key moments to win them the football games. Speaking at the right times, a lot like getting morning wood. Same, s- exactly the same thing. Yeah, it, it's where you want it. Yeah, you wake up, it's playoff time, you're good to go. <laughs> get down dirty. So yep. I'm saying, uh, but exactly this, are thing. you disappointed though from Saturday last Saturday that uh, teams like uh, Finesters, Longhorns, who, who we've all hyped up, thought they could make deep runs? I'm one disappointed. Done. Longhorns. I was expecting this to well, be. Finesters the stars were aligned, right for the Horns to do it. This was their season for Longhorns, man. They, 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 they didn't execute properly. Finessers, um, they, they're they susceptible to a game like this now and again. And Hurricane Season is the kind of team that can give that to they're them. Good, they're good, man. They are. They're good. Um, they're, they're we've seen from this group this kind of game before. And, and unfortunately, it happened in the playoffs. And it don't, I don't think it, we can take anything away from the massive growth that they've had through the season. Take By the way, away from the season. Uh, a shout out to my favorite Brazilian wide, wide receiver, Alexandre Bacalani, reposting. Also uh, known he as is the Mapanguari um, on Twitter. So I love yeah, when guys the get before, it. Yeah, on Twitter, yes. I love when guys get it. So sad to see him go because honestly, Finesters, more, more than being um, like just a, a solid team, great, so great group guys too. Rank and order. Um, Disappointment, like highest disappointment, lowest disappointment. Uh, Longhorns, uh, Finesters, and Hot Boys Hotline. If you rank it one through three, three being the highest, one being the lowest, who was the least, like least surprised that they lost in the one and done scenario? I'm least surprised by Hot Boys Hotline. And I disagree. I'm gonna give yeah. this one context actually, because I actually watched that game. Mm-hmm. Yes. And Hot Boys Hotline were down early by a significant amount. I think it might have been like 18-0. They, they lost 26-14 at the end. Yeah, and and they marched back for a significant portion of that, and it was only at the end of the game um, they were driving, and Tom Gatehouse just made the wrong read and threw it right at Shocker. the defender. But like. <laughs> Um, Sean Fontaine was open in the back of the end zone. Like they, they might have made that comeback happen. Like they, I, I made sure to make a mental note and say like, give credit where credit is due for this mm-hmm. game. But like, it's not my normal thing where I'm talking trash. I just thought that they would struggle against my dogs, and specifically against yeah, my dogs. Yeah. It's not, a, it's, it's not a great. Matchup. Yeah, it's yeah. a bad matchup. But I'm disappointed in Hot Boys Outline. So that's your highest. That's my highest. Dis- no, Longhorns, Longhorns is my highest. Longhorns. Like tied with Hot Boys Outline and. To me, finessers, it's not so much a disappointment. I think, like you said, Pease, it's it's more of a... They tend to have bad games sometimes, and this was just one of the bad nights. It's not necessarily... Like, they came a long way. They played a very, a very strong team in hurricane season. And My hurricane season game. looking good, by It's the not way. yours. They, they were talking trash about you the whole way after. Yeah, because like, you've hated on them for seasons. Seasons. No, for seasons. Yes, for seasons. No, Ever since no. they started first the whole se- I never season. 
hate on these guys. Yes. It was what you call brotherly love. A tough love. No, it's not love. brotherly love. They hate you. I've tough love is like what you describe from an abusive older brother. Yeah, that's like, what I have to these like kids. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. So, in so which be, case, I think they should they appreciate it. So exactly. before their game, they they were talking. Andy I'll come over and say hi. Mo turns around, he's like, yeah, yeah. What, what the hell? You say hi to him, but not to me. And then he just looked at him, and walked away. And then Simone goes, he knows my name. I go, probably by fluke, he knows your name. No, he loves me. I love you, Endo. Endo's right. put up some muscle, though. He looks like he's uh, working out of the gym. All right. Uh, he's trying to buy points here. Uh, well, also, like, like, wasn't he like 16 when he started playing in the FBI? Yeah. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was like Brandon Ingram before yeah. Brandon Ingram became what he is, uh, except that Ingram makes a lot of money. Man, he's making a lot of compliments like today. Too. All right. Uh, quarterfinal Wednesday. Um, again, my hurricane season beating up on the Ghost 44-32. Uh, Jared Taylor had a great game on Wednesday night. Uh, he, he looks JT. like, yeah, he is locked oh, in man. right now. He You'll was, see, it was the game of the week. Gorgeous balls, like oh, just dropping man. in forty bombs. Every time I turned around, <laughs> gorgeous balls. Every time I turned around, he was making plays. He had a phenomenal game against Ghost. He made that defense look stupid. Yeah, um, Jared Taylor improved throughout the season. I oh, really tremendously. I, I didn't like what I saw at the beginning of the season at all. I said, "Wow, this is not going to work." This, but he's. He, the game kind of slowed down for yeah, him. Yeah, he has a great arm, man. Yeah, he does. That, that surprises he's, me the most. He's this, why? He's, he was a pitcher. Yeah, but I didn't know that. But you know but what? Jared, but, I mean, yeah, so yeah, without totally, facts, yeah, I'm totally surprised. Yeah. No, but like, I saw him the first few weeks, and it wasn't great. And <laughs> this now, isn't his first season quarterback yeah, he either. He also came back to it <laughs> in a well, championship a game, by the way. Okay. But at this level of football, he okay. is head and shoulders above everyone else. He's just that much better athletic. He's got It's a God's oh, gift yeah. talent that he has over here that he's working with. Well, he is a U sports. I see. I remembered it this yes. time. Uh, players. <laughs> so I mean, and he. Wh- I thought he was when he went th- when he was playing in the states. I believe it was for baseball. Yeah, I think in California. A. Eh? Yeah. Like sunshine. He's, he's also. He does like, look like sunshine too. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he's also a phenomenal two-way actually. player in like Div Two. Yeah. Which I, helps, you, know? you know what's funny? I spoke to him in the parking lot. You spoke. Uh, to him? Yeah, I was in Lachine Sunday. That's why I think he had a really good game last Sunday. Because you spoke to him in the parking <laughs> lot. I, <spoke laughs> I, I love that. It's my. I am the reason. He. Uh, well, you can't just walk up to people in the parking lot. No, 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 I'm in the car. I see him. <laughs> out, night. I see him hey, get man. out of the car, right? No, he spooked him. Remember? And he's getting out of the car, and I honk at him, see if he can see me. So I go beep beep. He's like, looking around. Like, What's going Did on here, bro? Like, he, you go what? And what did I'm you like, do? He doesn't see me in the car. So he walks two steps. I honk. He was like, yo, what the hell is going on, man? Like, spooked out, man. He walks to, like, look back. Like, what's going on here? Well, for sure. I, I mean, tried that in a Walmart parking lot, and pepper spray does not taste as good as you think. No, it doesn't. It doesn't taste like pepper. Not at all. No. Uh, 5B. Uh, what caught your attention from the divisional games last Saturday? Uh, takeover. And their hooligan fans uh, really impressed me. I love, fans. I love I really love take over. I love the takeover fan club. Man, they are loud. I, I can't wait for them to be there uh, for the next round of games. So loud. I was there for the the game against the Mogadishu Pirates with Eagle. Uh, Joe Cano. You know, you talked about Jared Taylor's nice balls. Joe Cano did not have nice balls. Um, yeah, it's a tough game. I it was from no, but it was awful. Like it's it's it was awful. This the the score sheet looks better than he played. Ish. Like it's so brutal. The first, the first six passes of the game were just flutter balls that looked like punts. But was it nerves? Um, would you say because Jokono never gets uh, like flustered. swayed by anything else? He's locked in most of the time. He, he was forcing uh, passes into coverage with a ball not placed in the right spot for the receiver. So it was just bat down or interception or just it, the the receiver couldn't make a play on the ball in most cases. So last week when they played after. They were losing. I showed up, and then they haven't allowed a single point afterwards, and won okay. by like eighteen points. So right it's after, the, so right after the game, I told Joe, I was like, I showed up. You guys won. I'm basically Mokan now. And so I wasn't there this week. They lost. I'm sorry, Joe. I should have been there. The um, takeover with the height they have in the middle with Will Power, Alessandro Archero, and Vince Vincent Benjamin is going to be very difficult to defend. That that. Well, I wouldn't say surprised me so much that they're they're where they are, but the way they've been playing. But they're just, But the thing is, I, I saw them on Saturday, and they're, they're just, sneaky good. Is the, the, the <laughs> no? But but no, they they were <laughs> weren't they the one seed? No, yeah. no. But that's not what I mean. Like it's not the fact that they're here that surprises me. It's the way they've been playing. But they've been but, crushing people though, and and the way they do it, the fashion against the Punishers, it was over within the first five minutes of the game. They just never caught up to them, and, and against. And again, watching from field two with field one being the, the center of attention would take over Mogadishu Pirates. 
it just felt like that. And you said it perfectly, right? He's like Joe Cano never got in rhythm. And it, even though it was a one score lead for the takeover roster, it was it was, game was, it was never out of no. hand from they were in control of the game from the start to finish. I mean, that's I, what's impressive the most is the fact that they can't they're in control of every game. If I can, if I can call the cops on your pool party here for a second, though. Please okay, don't. thanks a lot, Flanders. Please don't <laughs> jerk face peas. Uh, well, no, uh, <laughs> he looks I like ain't, Flanders. No, no, no. <laughs> Ripped, maybe. But uh, Ian Inheber. Rick Flanners? Uh, yeah, he was ripped. Yeah, he was. Oh, ripped. Yeah, I heard yeah. Rick. Ian Inheber, um, he he took too many chances. And, like, so he threw three interceptions, but he also had two balls in red zone that were touchdowns that, man, a, like a half a second later, that's a, that's an interception. You know, it just, just he needs to be a little bit more careful because mm-hmm. I think he knows this wasn't the sharpest game. And and not that he necessarily got away with one because Mogadish Pirates, the, the score – would indicate that it's more it was closer than it was but um he was he'll need to be sharper the rest of the way to to That's right. really to really take take over to where they they should be which is the championship game admittedly his first interception oh, yeah. was really not on him it was <laughs> literally into hands of the receiver bobbled into the air and intercepted yeah. so you can't really put that one on him no um, but, but 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 he also got away with with passes that that could have been intercepted i'm going to i'm going to call out the guy who 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 uh, was responsible for the interception. So, Mokan, you go ahead and I'll call him out as soon as I get the information. Wrecking Crew Super Saiyans. I know GM was a part of that game. Jim, did you see that game? Kevin that you, uh, Cousy. Did you, did you have a good look at that second touchdown? <laughs> From the bench? Yeah. yeah. That's the one. Um, <laughs> okay, Jordan Alar throws a red zone interception. That was the, the, on the last play of the game. It was tipped off the rusher. Yeah. The, the rusher made a great play on that. Yeah, like he that, saw that ball win flutter. is on his shoulders. Yeah. Uh, GM, I know you guys were in a deadlock in the second half of no one scoring points. Mm-hmm. But in your mind, and this is now, you guys are out, so you guys can do it. You can say whatever you want now. Yeah. Did you guys allow Wrecking Crew to slip away the victory with the way it played out? Yeah, absolutely. Um, both teams sort of played uh, control the clock football. As you can tell by the fact that I think there were two possessions in the second right, half. Right, because you need five to win in a football game, but you yeah. two won the game, yes. Um, it was just, I think, two teams that were decently playing against each other's strengths. And it, it honestly came down to that last play where the rusher tipped the ball because Jared Galone was open in the back of the end zone. It was just a sort of back and forth in that game of a chess stalemate almost. Well, Kevin, Ku- Kevin Kuasu was like... Crusade. I Crusade. I felt like Aaron Andrews talking to Richard Sherman on the sidelines after that game. Like uh, we've just sh- shook hands. I'm going back to the to my bench with my team. Like you're done. You want to go home after a football game. And you have someone coming in your face. Like yo, guy. Um, you need to tell your buddy uh, PZ and uh, whatever. By the way, whatever is Simon. Hi, hi, whatever. Yeah, whatever. whatever. Thank you, Kevin. Um, totally I felt friends. like I was whatever. talking to like a crazy person, Kevin St. Pierre on. On Molly, but wow. Kevin St. Pierre is like 20 and, uh, and Kevin Kusay is a grown ass man. <laughs> so, like, it, it, it's just like when you're trying to leave and someone's in your face confrontational, like, there's very few ways to be polite in that instance. Yeah. Next time, have Mokan spook him in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. Beep, beep. <laughs> um, <laughs> BW. BW. Beep, beep. So, that first, that first throw in the takeover game was to it was an outside hook to Julian Wilson that was wide open. The it sorry? bounced off his chest and was in the air for about a minute before being intercepted. The who's hard? You said a name so quickly. Oh, he's going Julian back to the previous the game. game. Yeah, the game. you said a name so quickly that I'm pretty sure. Julian Wilson. Awesome. Shame. Your fault. Shame. Shame. <laughs> Your fault. Um, okay, so Wrecking Crew got away with one. Would you agree, gentlemen, given how they've steamrolled their competition the last five weeks? I, so I, th- I thought this would be a close game, I, but I didn't think it was going to be this kind of close game. Like, I would have been excited to see 33-32, uh, you know, 35, 34, that kind Maybe of Maybe on Madden you'll get that. Well, no, it just, it just knowing both offenses' it's and a ability score. to score points, um, I was surprised by that. I thought, I thought Jordan Law oh. would be very, very much prepared, and I thought oh. Stephen Harper saw it. And, and they were to their defense. It just wasn't the kind of game I expected. So another game that we didn't expect was the blue team against uh, the process. That made me sad. Yesterday. Um, well, not really. So okay, so no, it, it really made me sad. It was on field two. I was score keeping field three, so I didn't see every I single play. It. But more common score keeping. It's I would so say before halftime, but about fifteen minutes in, 
more content to me is like this game's over yeah it was 20 Two. nothing yeah, so they it was 18 to, nothing whatever he, he, he turned around like this game's over no, it was 20 nothing because they were down 20 nothing and a half. But so Mo was like, this game's over. Like, so, well, there's still a lot of time. Yeah, but hold on here. Sinez was 0 for 8. His first eight passing attempts, a lot of drop balls by, by Trust the Process. Okay. They so, didn't so, do him any favors. Don't backpedal. You came up, you're like, <laughs> this game's over. I'm like, well, Mo Khan, you never know. He's like, no, no, no. I know. So do you always refer to Mo as Mo Khan in all, in all kinds of circumstances? I so. Well, yeah. I don't really call him Mozen. Other but you can also just call him Mo. <laughs> I could. But I, I no, like but Mo Khan. What did you tell Mo Khan? Okay. I like Mo Khan. Like Dave Gelman calling the New York so, Giants no, the New York I football Giants. I, 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 I can't call the New York Giants. <laughs> Impossible. I tell Mo's in. Wait. You, like, there's still plenty of time. It's just 20 points. No. No. It's over, bro. And then the process scores. Uh, blue team. Uh, turnover. Then the process gets the ball back at their own 10 after punt. Down 14 points. And Mo's like, oh, there's a chance now. Oh, it's possible. So he turned around and like, so Mo's and you're saying there's a chance now. Well, you know, you never know. And then back and forth with turnovers. And there was a, was it a pick six by uh, Essentially, the Essentially, um, the, the trust process stopped them twice. They scored. They tied it up with five plays to go. Five plays to go. Blue team bringing down one play left at the one-year line. Scoring a touchdown on the back of the end zone. They win 26-20. They move on, and that's that's all. That was a phenomenal ending. So does does Daniel Salinas take too many shots downfield? No, he just successful. had he just had a bad day. The drops from his receivers. He had a bad day. His receivers had a bad day. Six drops, I count. Okay. He used his legs the right way in the second half. Not in the, fr- the first half. He should have ran more because in the second half it worked. It opened the field for them. It mm-hmm. created opportunities. In the first half, it looked like he wanted to be more of a pocket passer and let his guys do their thing, and. Well, if they're open and they're dropping passes, it's yeah, hard yeah. to blame him for but, that. But like, if, if it's third and something, you have two drops, maybe use your legs. Like, I'm guess. not, but, but like, trust your reads too. Yeah, right? yeah. No, I'm, I'm not criticizing his play. I'm just saying. It sounds it, like you're criticizing yeah, his play. It worked in the second half. If he would have started that in the first half, maybe they would have won. Yeah. All right, let's preview the games, guys. Hurricane season's LLF. Uh, Kane season's won 44 21 over LFF. Uh, how does LFF stop Jared Taylor and uh, what worries you more from Taylor? His Four man rush. Do you go, well, that's the thing. Do you Four worry, man rush. But do you worry about his legs or do you worry about his arm because he's getting better and better with every pass he makes now? I don't. I, I wouldn't care. His legs are just an extra at this point. He's playing so well as a passer quarterback. So does Thomas Kutu have a big impact in this game? So the thing with Thomas Kutu, as good as he is, he's a very good rusher. He's not the sort of rusher that's going to contain you every single play. He's the sort of rusher that's going to make a play every now and then. So he's going to get that sack. He's going to ma- get his defense in a good position. So if it's third, second and short, you could put this defense back in third and long with a good sack. But he's not the kind of rusher that gets constant pressure and forces bad throws. Against a guy like Jared Taylor, it could turn the game around because his sacks could sort of be turnovers if you get in on third downs. Mm-hmm. But that also... that. That may also be in a situation where he never really gets that opportunity because if he doesn't put enough pressure on Jared, he might actually score every drive. How surprised are you that Flamma were actually here? I'm not surprised. They, I saw their last game of the regular season. I was like, you know what? They got some elements there. Schaefer has been I mean, improving so as a quarterback for them this year. I, I, and I, honestly, I, I, I've seen Schaefer in, in previous seasons, and he, he's a quarterback I like a lot. My, my thing is that they also got an insanely lucky draw. They, they played Grand Lionel, who's quarterback, wasn't there? Uh, Sebastian Thibault was, was 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 not there due to injury. Jalen Grandison's been hampered by an ankle injury for oh that game was three terrible. Or four weeks. That game, was, the Texas Baron killed themselves in there during that game. They they couldn't do anything. Their defense was not stopping anybody. Their offense was, it was Kieran Ranger and that was it. There, it was a one man. It was a one man show. It was a receiver and Texas Bearmans lost that game more than Flamafu won that game. Yeah. So, I mean. I don't think they get by Grand Lionel if Sebastian Cibo is there, and I think with a healthy uh, te- with a healthy Jalen Grandison, it's likely at least a better game. So, who, but Flamafu is a very streaky team, though. When when they start with a good, when they start with a lead, mm-hmm. and they play well, they play well the whole game. But they're also the kind of team that if they hit a rough pa- the rough patch, they play terribly the whole way. So, yeah. you, if you look at Hurricane oh. Seasons roster, yep. After Jared Tiller, who's the second best player on this team? Kevin Dunnett. Yeah, Kevin Dunnett's good. I have Andel Gordon. Andel Gordon's Andel, good too. Andel's good. Uh, Benjamin McMahon. Yeah, don't is don't playing, don't discount really Benjamin well. Benny McMahon. He made a sick catch last week. Yeah, yesterday. He's, he's really uh, week, he's really performed well in the playoffs. He does honestly. He doesn't look like much because of his size, but he's a very good receiver. He's like a young Wayne Corbett 
Wes Wecker like? You know? I don't think so. He plays not that style at all. No, he doesn't. Very fast. Yeah. Danny, <laughs> Danny Amendola, you know? But no, but you can choose a black receiver you're allowed. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep it. <laughs> that, right. was, that got it's awkward like, like, really fast. It reminds me of white people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Wes Walker, Danny Amendola. I'm no, out. It's not his style at all. He's, 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 a, he's a very well, fast receiver. He is a bit like Danny Amendola, though. Yeah, he's, he's like no, no, but his style does. Rem- like he, he makes some very good catches. He's fast. Danny's also very fast. Yeah, I mean, and he's the I, underneath. I, I'm a guy. Dolphins fan, so I hope you're right. Because <laughs> right now, I think the Dolphins just signed Benjamin McMahon instead. Oh man! Oh, that was cheaper, right? Uh, GHB ten guys one cup. They had no meaning during the regular season. If you were to put a percentage number right now on ten guys upsetting GHB, what would it be right now? Forty five percent. Yeah. 40, 45. Yeah. I mean, you're asking for random numbers. <laughs> <laughs> 47 points. Yeah, like, random number, 38, 34. But so we, we're all in the same range. Like, so you guys uh, are getting the fighter's chance then. That was, it yeah, was I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it'll be a, I don't think it'll be a bad game at all. The, I th- the real question is whether or not Justin Lerner is LT enough. Well, if he is not healthy, how do they Oh, wait, just, I didn't know Justin Lerner was He's not hurt. He's, he's banged he's, up. Yeah, he's, he's hurt, yeah. So oh. how do they... How do he, they I, I think it's his ankle or his hamstring, but he's hurt in a way that he can't... He, he's on. He's on the field. Hey, bro, what's wrong with you? He told me he's hurt. It's been like a few weeks. It's nagging him. I didn't ask what's nagging you, because he was journalism playing yeah. during the game. So he just turned around like during a huddle. Was like, yeah, I'm hurt. We we just had Eagle message a guy about his breakfast. And Did he answer? Ask by the way? Did he answer? By the way, no. oh, disappointed. Okay, so if you are the ten guys one cup, what do you do with Justin Lord? Do you minimize his presence by because he plays corner, right? Do you put him inside to minimize? No, he, uh, if he's not 100%, he field? shouldn't be out there. Yeah. Is it, you, they have other guys that are good. You need They need guys who give who play hard, and Justin Lerner, as much as he's the best player on his team, if he's if he can't move, he'll get picked on at some point, which is what happened last week. So what, what about Matt, Matthew Kanalukias? Uh, Kanalukias, I beg your pardon. Uh, does he need to play lights out or just manage the game against a guy like Danny Elward who can play? With the so he, here's the thing. Um, I think... I think the 10 guys one cup defense can man up against Greendale human beings and disrupt a lot of the concepts. If, if Justin Lerner is Justin Lerner is there because then he's the matchup on Brandon Elward. Exactly. But so otherwise they don't have any. Otherwise they can't. So it's two two game scripts. One, if you are if you can stop them early and get to a two score lead early, just gas pedal the rest of the game. If you need to get the ball out of Danny Elward's hands because you know you can't get more than one stop in a game, Really, really grind it down and make it five possessions for you and five possessions mm-hmm. for them. That's good. I think they, it's it's collective effort. They have a very strong team. It doesn't need to be perfect. His balls are not always like in the numbers, but he gets it there. It's good enough, and the guys make the rest of the way. The team's been playing really well. You've been talking about it. They hit like the streak at the right time. But if they don't have that matchup, if they don't have Justin Lerner to cover Brendan Elward, then yeah. who does it? Because they, they need somebody on Phil Dikovacic, they need somebody on Alex Joltepuff, and they need somebody on Brandon Lovett. But so J- Joltepuff, you, you can man up because he's not the fastest and there's good athletes on yeah. the team. No, I'm not saying it's impossible, but the problem is that the way 10 go, ten guys one cup play defense is they like to have two deeper safeties that reads what's coming and then shoots the ball. Against an offense, yeah, like, ten, against an offense like Greendale, you mean, that will not work. No, that's so, a loss. <laughs> like, so their their defensive style that's been working against everybody will not work against these guys. All right, five B Moss City take over first one to forty five wins this game, guys. Given how prolific these offenses no, I are, completely disagree with this. I think there's going to be a lot of interceptions because of the way both offenses work. A lot of jump balls, a lot of possibilities for turnovers. It's going to be a five interception game, three apart, three for one, two for the other. I just don't know. I, who. I don't think so. I think it's going to be a high flying game. Uh, Moss City doesn't make a lot of mistakes, and Ian Inheber will have learned from last week okay. and uh, will keep the ball out of the defenders. All right, so we're talking about interceptions. That's just for the library from Simo's point. This is, by the way, our specialty is interceptions. Yeah, so no. Uh, That's what I do. All three of us. Um, <laughs> Moss City's explosive office because they love the deep ball. Yep. We, I mean, they're called Moss City. Yeah, and you guys talked about the middle of the defense of TakeOver and how tall, rangy they are mm-hmm. on the football mm-hmm. field. Will they have issues against them? This weekend, if they if they do Monday. nothing but check up deep balls, yes. But uh, Moss City is a team that's well built, and um, the, it's weird because they're 
like some dudes who are not that tall, but the quarterback <laughs> gigantism word of the day. Um, <laughs> like he's he's really big. Uh, Arnaud Desjardins is his name, and he he's not a guy who takes chances. He threw four interceptions all season. If it's pretty good. If they're trying, if takeovers just trying to take away the deep ball, he's gonna run. He's a great athlete. He's gonna run. He's gonna throw checkdowns. Um, he's a smart quarterback. He 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 does take some sacks, but. He's not gonna. He'd rather take a sack and lift for another down than than throw an interception. That's smart. Though. Yeah. That's a good thing to do. Uh, so Desjardins, does he win with his legs or arms? Then guys, legs. He needs to use I his mean, legs both, more. but le- yeah, yeah, both. Legs will be a necessity in this game. I think that's the X factor: is his legs, not his arm. If you have to pick one of the two, because he's gonna throw for 150 yards. Yeah. A wrecking Crew blue team. They didn't meet during the regular season. Blur. If Wrecking Crew bench Kevin Kusai, they'll win. Okay, so oh, let's go on to the games of the week now. Uh, <laughs> wow. Wrecking Crew got their one scare against Science. We, we got, they got the game out of the system. Are they now back to being focused? Can they say, you know what, we, we uh, dodged a bullet that could have really ended our playoff hopes on Wednesday? I, I don't think it's really getting that game out of the system. I don't think they're, they're necessarily like, apt to play that kind of game. I just think, honestly, Super Saiyans really handled them well. And it just the, the the end result did not work out to their favor, but it, it's a game that was well played by Super Saiyan. So is the um, blueprint out then on how to beat? I j- it just the, so like the personnel <laughs> that Super Saiyans have, I think, were the greater part of that. There's a lot of big guys on Super Saiyans, a lot of tall guys, and Stephen Harpersod is not tall, and and it's th- but it makes a difference. It, you, you, yes, your line it of sight is not always yeah, amazing. It does. You, you can bring. Let's say a guy like Jordan Lard on a rush where it's he he can ch- he can change the throwing windows for for Stephen Harper side and make it difficult for him. Uh, as, as well on on yes. the blue team side, um, I think we were of the opinion that blue team were going to be handled quite easily by the process. And considering yeah. the studs that the process have on defense, um, and they were taken out, they they didn't yeah. do anything. So if if Alex Raymond was able to cut up. The studs on the process's defense, I I would argue that the process's defense is head and shoulders above Wrecking Crew's defense. But can blue teams stop Stephen Harper's side? They don't need to if they have the, if they if it's a possession game and they have the ball last, they'll win. Yeah. So I, th- be- I, I think they can though. I, I, really? Yeah, blue team they, they played really well against the process yesterday. And both the process and Wrecking Crew play that sort of. We're broadcasting that we're playing four one. Stop it with Sh- uh, Shane Stewart in the back. Like it's yeah. it's the same defense over and yeah. over again. So beyond David Horwood, who else poses as a threat from blue team against Wrecking Crew? Is there another guy, well, a secondary player? We just talked about Alex Raymond. Yeah, Alex Delary is also very good. Un- the Especially under-used? since the move from quarterback to receiver, yes. when that switch was made, both players are now in their like, natural spot. Yeah. Both benefited the switch. Alex Delary is. Very good. I think he had the game-winning touchdown yesterday. And yes, he did. And to your point uh, about Horwood, I, I believe he played against Horwood a couple of times when he was on C Assassins, and he was a guy yes. like just l- kind of got lost in Division Three, but in a low division is a guy who can really take over a game. Like so, it's it's nice to see, right? Like not everyone's going to be a, a huge impact player in a high division, but true. definitely can have a, a huge impact and can play a huge role. So happy to see him. Uh, and his impact on blue team. But I think it just speaks to the volume of the players. If it's the last play of the game and you go to this receiver uh, instead of others, it shows confidence and how good this guy actually is. Mm-hmm. So now time for the games we're going to talk about. That will go to the finals. Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So we have hurricane season against Les Flamands Fous. Give me the canes. Hurricane season, brother. Scissors, scissors. GHB against 10 guys, one cup. I said GHB will make the finals. I stick by it. It's going to be close, but give me GHB. Ten guys, one cup. Oh, you want that on your side. Six B. Uh, five B. Moss City against TakeOver. I'm going to take over. Possible. <sighs> give me TakeOver. I'm going to go Moss City. And Wrecking Crew against Blue Team. I'll give me Blue Team. Yeah, I'll go Wrecking Crew. Give me Wrecking Crew. Again, because I'm pretty sure they'll bench Kevin Kusai. <laughs> <laughs> they sell Kevin the games in Kirkland. Magic words, please. Mo, are you wearing a belt? Good night, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I love that they get an answer. He doesn't always wear sweatpants. That's oh, a good point. Always. Now, belt on the sweatpants. That's class. That's Is you, it? you can wear it to the strip club. 
No, you can't. 